Hello, good morning, or good evening, good afternoon, good good whatever, wherever you are. <laughs> Hi, my name is Linda. I'm from ITTT. Um, welcome to another live session this week. I'm super excited to be here today um, and to talk about this interesting topic. And before we jump in, as always, a short intro, um, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you are interest in, interested in teaching English abroad, online, all things TEFL and TESOL. I highly recommend liking and subscribing. Um, we are live on YouTube and on Facebook at the same time. So if you haven't liked our page, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, now is the perfect opportunity. You're already here. You have nothing to lose. And we share a lot of interesting and helpful content every day for people who are teachers, people who want to be teachers. We share teaching material. We also share... Um, job offers for people looking to teach English abroad, and obviously a lot of TEFL and TESOL information, so you don't want to miss it. So please go ahead and like and subscribe so you also never miss any of our other upcoming live sessions in the future. We do go live uh, at least once a week, me and also my colleague Lisa, she also goes live um, once a week. Uh, usually at the beginning of the week and me at the end of the week. So this is where we are and what we're doing. Um, we also have a 30% off discount code um, that we only share during our live sessions. So that's very, very special. So how can you get this discount? One method is by uh, scanning this QR code that you can see in the upper right-hand corner there. You can scan that. And then it will lead you to an application page. You fill out this application and then you get a discount 30% off. If you can't scan um, the QR code, that is no problem at all. You can just use the link that I'm going to share now in the comment section, which looks like this. So you can use this link, click on it, uh, fill out the application just the same and also get 30% off any TEFL or TESOL course from ITTT. So if you're not yet certified, you're thinking about it, this is a great opportunity to do so. You can also just copy and paste and save this link for later if you're not sure yet which course to take. There are a lot of course options. We're going to go into some of them today and maybe that will help you make a decision. As always, you can also ask questions throughout this entire live session. So don't be shy. That's why I'm here for. Um, that's why I'm here. That's what I'm here for, answering your questions today. And we're also going to talk about teaching abroad versus studying abroad. What is better? What might be better for you? Um, and yeah. That's what we're going to do today. I'm also going to do an intro about myself. If this is the first time that you're seeing me, I'm introducing myself. But before that, I also really want to know, where are you right now? Where in the world are you watching from? I'm in South Korea. It is 10.30 a.m. on Friday, Friday morning. Um, I'm super excited. It's Friday. Can't wait for the weekend. Um, I think very soon we're heading to spring, which is my favorite season, especially in South Korea with all the cherry blossoms and all the other spring flowers. So I'm super excited. It's still cold. So I think this weekend is still going to be cold, but very soon, um, I'm looking forward to spring, but anyway, where are you right now? I've actually been living in Korea for almost seven years now. Time flies like crazy. It's insane. Um, but anyway. <laughs> That's me. All right. Okay. Richard says, I did for over 10 years. What did you do for over 10 years? Live abroad? Taught abroad? Studied abroad? Lived in Korea? What? <laughs> uh, let me know. Very cool. We also have Chit. Sway Ong, um, I'm probably butchering that name. I'm very sorry. And I can't read your comment. I'm very so sorry. Okay. I can't afford any dollars because I'm a revolutionary now. Okay. Very cool. <laughs> well, maybe um, you can get some information for also the future. Something to take away. 
Hello, LaTurk. I'm Linda, not Lisa. Lisa is my colleague, very similar name, but close. From the Philippines. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. I know um, it's been a crazy 24 hours, probably, around the world. Um, so thank you so much for taking some time out of your day today to spend it with me. It's probably going to take, I would say, maybe 30 minutes today. It should be not that long, uh, what I have to say about this topic. And then we can also have a QA and a um, where you can ask me questions. So, um, yeah, uh, let's do that. Juliana is here. Hi. And she says, I'm watching from Illinois. It's 7 p.m. here. We get a snowstorm again today. Oh, no. Oh, it is 25 degrees. Ooh, 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that is really cold. <laughs> I hope you're staying safe. We have Augustine from, ooh, Cuernavaca. Is that how you say it? Cuernavaca, Mexico. Very nice. Cool. How's the weather there? Is it cold or is it warm? <laughs> is it more in the north or in the south? I'm not sure about Mexican geography. Unfortunately, I really want to go, though, to Mexico. It's on my list. Very cool. So we have people from everywhere. That's very, very cool. I always love that. An international crowd. Um, <laughs> Brett is here. Hello. And in Cali, 51 degrees. Brr, okay. <laughs> All right. That's not that cold, Brett. Come on. For California, it's cold, but... <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's nice to see you all again as well. Very nice. All right. Very good. Yes, I'm from Burma. I thought so. Yes, that's what I figured. Very nice. Thank you so much for joining. That's awesome. Very, very cool. Good. So today we're going to talk about what is better, teaching abroad or studying abroad, what might be better in your case, um, some advantages for sure um, when you teach abroad versus studying abroad. That's the angle that we're obviously going to look at today. Um, and yeah, let me start by just introducing myself. If you're watching this for the first time, who am I? My name is Linda. Um, and I am a travel writer and content creator under the name Linda Goes East. Um, and I also have my own website at lindagoeseast.com. And I'm very active on Instagram as well. So you can check that out. Give me a follow. Send me a message over there. Also at Linda Goes East. I'm originally from Germany and the US. My mom is German. My dad is American. I've lived in uh, Germany, the US, China and South Korea for the past seven years. Um, and I'm also a Teflon TESOL marketing professional for ITTT. ITTT stands for International Teflon and TESOL Training. A lot of T's in there. Um, you can find us on the web at www.teflcourse.net. We're also on Instagram and on many other social media platforms like on Facebook and YouTube where you guys are watching at the moment. Um, on Instagram, we are International TEFL Training. So if you don't follow us on Instagram yet, I highly recommend you do so. We are a leading TEFL and TESOL course provider worldwide. We offer a great variety of different courses online, in class, combined. As many of you know, because many of you are actually... ITTT course graduates. So welcome, welcome. And we started doing these live sessions over a year ago, like a year and four months ago in October of 2020, I believe. Yeah. And ever since then, I've been here pretty much every week, every week. And I've really been enjoying doing these live sessions, connecting with you guys um, to grow this TEFL family, TEFL um, community and helping you out and learning more about you as well. So thank you so much for coming here week after week after week. I see many familiar faces and also new faces and I appreciate you. <laughs> All right, good. 
back to today's topic. So the first question I actually have for you guys, and I hope um, you answer that, is before you hear anything what I say today, what would you rather do? Would you rather study abroad or teach abroad? Which one would you rather do? Let me know in the comments right now. What just out of your gut gut feeling or maybe would, what did you do in the past um, from your own experience? What would you rather do? Would you rather study abroad or teach abroad? Let me know in the comment section. Me personally, I would do both, <laughs> probably. <laughs> but it's kind of, uh, not everyone can do both, right? So if you had to pick just one, um, what would it be? What would it be? <laughs> yes, Dina, that's what I'm saying, right? Study abroad and then teach abroad. So both, <laughs> for sure. But if you had to just pick one, if you just had to pick one, what would you do? <laughs> uh, still, I would do both, right? That would be the dream, of course, study abroad, um, and then also graduate and then go and teach abroad <laughs> in many different countries. That'd be great. But if you just had to pick one, what would you do? Okay, Dina would study. All right, you would study abroad. Why? Why would you study abroad and not teach abroad? Or did you? Did you study abroad? already or is that your plan okay juliana says i will do study abroad because i had a great experience in france interesting all right yanisha also study abroad interesting why yanisha dina why study abroad <laughs> okay dina says because i prefer to study anyway i mean pref i prefer studying over working right everything's better than working <laughs> uh, okay, Leturk also says how I wish to do both, but I have to pick one. It would be study abroad. Wow, everybody, everybody says study abroad. Interesting. Okay, all right. So maybe we just stop this live session here <laughs> because I'm going to tell you why teaching abroad is better than study abroad. So maybe I can actually persuade you, maybe change your mind. So at the end of the session, I'm going to ask you again, with everything that I've told you, would you now change your mind or would you still study abroad? <laughs> All right, let's see. Great. Good fun, though. That's why I like doing these live sessions, because, um, you know, I learn from you guys as well. I get to learn more about you, how you think, um, what you prefer. <laughs> so that's very interesting as well. All right. So let's go over. Um, I think I have five reasons why teaching abroad is better than studying abroad. And let's see if you agree, because you all prefer studying abroad. <laughs> so <laughs> that should be interesting. Maybe we'll have heated debates today. Dina says, I like to fill my bowl with updates that I can be useful Maybe in this time, I would be able to teach any time when I want. Right. Yeah, that's why we're here, to, to exchange information, to maybe, right, um, learn something new, obviously. All right. And here, I'm sorry, I cannot read your name, um, but our revolutionary from Burma prefers to teach abroad while studying. Okay, that's also good. That's also really good. All right, good. Let's jump into the first reason. And I think that's a really big one that's gonna make sense for a lot of people. And that is that number one, when you teach abroad, you will make money, right? When you teach abroad, you work, you will make money. Versus when you study abroad, you will probably not make any money. You're actually gonna have to pay to study abroad, right? So a lot of people, aren't able to do that for that reason. So let's have a look. Yeah, number one, you will actually earn money when teaching abroad. Oh, and I need to make this bigger where you can't see. Okay, so when you teach English abroad, you are actually earning money and depending on where you teach, what kind of school you work for, etc., cetera, and what country and so on, you can earn anywhere from 1,000, 600 or even 
sometimes lower, a thousand, a thousand two hundred, four hundred to four thousand US dollars or more. Sometimes in the Middle East, they have amazing salaries, tax free also. Um, so yeah, you can make a lot of money every month. And um, with that money, you can actually, if you graduate first, you graduate first, um, you go and teach abroad, you can use this money to actually pay off your student loans, right? So you will, because student loans, especially in the States, it's a big problem. Um, I don't know what the average amount, maybe some of you know, the average amount, um, average, what is it, student debt amount that U.S. university graduates have, um, it's a lot. And if you choose to wait with your experience abroad after you graduate and then you teach abroad, you can actually pay off your student loans and be debt free soon, very soon. I know a lot of people who did that. They went abroad, taught English um, to actually pay off their student loans because when you teach English abroad, depending on where you teach, most of the countries where you teach, your salary is really high and the cost of living lower. So you can actually save up to $1,000 or more every month, which is great. You wouldn't be able to do that at home. You definitely wouldn't be able to do that with studying abroad. Um, so that's really great. And you can also, at the same time, live a comfortable lifestyle. With this salary, you're able to save money, you're able to pay off student loans, and you can also save up money, especially in Asia or in the Middle East region. You can save that money and you can live a comfortable lifestyle. You can save money to travel to other, uh, other countries as well. So this is the first reason here. And I think everybody agrees that this is a huge plus and benefit for um, teaching abroad versus studying abroad, right? Huge plus. So that's the first one I wanted to talk about. I'm sure all of you agree. Is there somebody that doesn't agree? Let me know. But um, that's what it looks like for sure. <laughs> Dina, yes, also says, sure. Yeah. All right. Good. First reason, I think we all agree. Makes sense. Let's C, and let's talk about the second one over here. Uh, number two, you will get international work experience when you teach English abroad. I'm sure we can also all agree on this one, right? Um, and this international work experience can look very differently. I put a couple of different pictures down below because it's very different. And there's so many different aspects that go into international work experience, right? Um, but it's definitely great to have international work experience on your resume, right? And with this, you will actually have an advantage on the job market when you come back home, or maybe you decide to move to a different country. Um, either way, you will have an advantage on the job market, global job market, or your local job market when you go back home. And actually, research has shown that starting salaries for graduates with international work experience are approximately 7,000 US dollars a year more compared to people without any international work experience on their resume. So you'll actually make more money with this experience on your resume. And now some people are going to say, yeah, if I study abroad, I also get international experience. You get international experience, but probably not international work experience, right? You're not going to actually work in um, a company. A school is also a business, a company. Um, you're not going to work with likely any, um, you know, different colleagues and co-workers. Sure, you have friends, other students from other countries and local students if you study abroad. Um, but you're not probably going to have to interact with them as much compared to if you work in this environment. And I can speak from my own experience when I taught English in China and I worked in Korea. Um, a lot of it has to do with also the work culture, like the office culture is very, very different in different countries than what you're used to back home. And you're not going to have that when you study abroad. And this is something that employers back home 
all around the world value extremely high, right? That you're able to adapt, you're able to work with your colleagues, your superiors. They do many things very, very differently from what you're used to back home. Uh, maybe some of the uh, working, the labor law are not the same as you're used to back home, but you need to just adjust and deal with it. And this is something that will be a great, great benefit and huge bonus for when you go back home and you're looking for a job. And all of these things also, this abroad experience is really great for interviews when you're interviewing because you have so much to talk about. Um, obviously also with study abroad, but um, especially with working, teaching abroad, you're gonna have a lot of insight into all of these different um, work experiences. And you can see down here in the pictures that I put, um, it can be so, so different. So you have like the office um, thing, like I mentioned, like office culture in different countries. Um, if you do kind of teaching in, in a completely different country, you're also gonna have all these different cultural aspects that you're gonna learn. Um, not everybody thinks the same way as you do, so you get to see things from different angles. Um, yeah, you can really shine in your work experience and make it um, something that will work for you. Even if a lot of people, you know, don't have a great work experience abroad, and that's okay too, because you can also learn from negative experiences. So when you go back home, you have a lot to talk about as well, how you manage to deal with these negative experiences turn them into benefits for you, how this will help you for your future in the job that you're applying for now, for example. So yeah, <laughs> I hope this all made sense. Um, but I, I thought that was really interesting with um, the 7,000 US dollars more a year. And that's a fact. Um, obviously, this is US, US salaries, um, companies in the US who paid graduates with international work experience, on average, 7,000 US dollars a year more. So that's really, really good to know. <laughs> and hopefully will be, will entice you to maybe change your mind later when I ask you again, study abroad or teach abroad. <laughs> All right, feel free if you have any comments, if you don't agree with what I'm saying, or if you have a question to make a comment, leave a comment down below and I will um, get back to you. You don't have to agree with me. That's okay, too. We can have a discussion. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't want ev any everybody, if you don't agree with me, just say it. You know, that'd be great. We can have a discussion about it. We can learn from each other. So, okay, good. So Dina's saying, for non-native speakers, it's quite hard. Do you mean it's quite hard to go, to go abroad for teaching English? There are a lot of places who do hire um, non-native speakers, actually. And if, um, I don't know if you've already watched some of my colleague Lisa's live videos. She is a non-native English speaker. She's from Russia. She taught English in China very successfully. And she's now back home and she's teaching online a lot. But she actually gives a lot of advice, um, a lot of advice for non-native English speakers, where to work, how to polish your resume, um, how to also stand out and things like that mm, to get that money or finding a job. Right, yeah. Um, I think especially if you look at countries where they give you a lot of benefits, you know, a free, they give you free round trip flights, um, they give you paid apartments. So there's not a lot of costs involved to actually move abroad in many cases. Um, and Dina also says, because almost all institutions ask for natives. Okay. They might do. Um, but I would still apply to anything anyway. All job, most job offers, not only for teaching, but for any other job, the requirements are typically just ludicrous, ridiculous. Nobody actually fulfills all of the requirements for any job offer most of the time, right? And companies know that, but they just put out these ridiculous job offers, um, but still apply because 
it's not only about the requirements or like the the your um your credentials, your qualifications. It's also about more than that, your personality once they invite you and they see who you are and the the interview and everything, it all kind of comes together. So, I wouldn't say that it's harder. I agree for non-native English speakers, it is harder, but it's not impossible. And there are many places who are actually looking also specifically for native speakers and non-native speakers. Um, for for English teachers because there are some clear advantages f uh, when it comes to non-native English speakers. Usually non-native English speakers because they've actually learned English, they learned the language, they will they will actually know the grammar much better than um, native speakers. Let's be honest, it's just how it is. And I think it's changing too. A lot of institutes and language schools, they are recognizing that and they kind of want to have this um, the mix of all of that. So native and non-native. I think that's a great benefit for, um, for a school. Okay, great. And Juliana says, you are right because I got a lot of job interview notifications on LinkedIn. Well, there you go. Hmm. And you say, don't worry, just let a professional network recognize that you are an amazing English teacher. Yeah. I think looking for a job in today's day and age is difficult in general. Um, and it's much more than just applying and then getting invited to an interview. You kind of really need to go a little bit the extra mile. I think also networking um, has a lot to do with that. So um, I always mention Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, try to network with people and kind of get into that inner circle. And I did a live session about how to, um, how to um, find a job, a teaching job a couple of weeks ago. So go ahead, go to our playlist on Facebook and on YouTube and check that out. There are a lot of tips in there as well. All right, and Leturk says, I agree with you, Linda. Just apply, though it's quite difficult. There are lots of possibilities. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so this was number two. When you teach abroad, you will get international work experience. Let's have a look at the third reason why teaching Abroad is better than study abroad. Number three, you will live like a local. All right, you will live like a local. What does that mean? So most of the time, students abroad, they live in dormitories in the university. They don't really live with the locals. But English teachers abroad, they really live in the same apartments where the locals live. Me, I used to live in... Um, the same apartments like locals. Um, now I live in the same apartment as Koreans. It's a normal apartment. I'm actually the only um, foreigner living in my apartment. So um, I really live among the locals, like the locals. And um, that's why English teachers are also generally more integrated into the local population because we live exactly where they live. We, we're not like international students where we live in international student dormitories and only hang out among international students. And I put a couple of pictures down below. Um, this, this is something from my own personal experience. When I lived in China, that's sort of the first picture. It's not me, it's not my picture, but um, it reminded me of that. Um, and it was Lunar New Year or Chinese New Year. I remember living in my apartment. At, I was off, right? It's a holiday. So <laughs> my plan was to sleep in, enjoy my holiday, um, you know, just chill. But then at, um, I don't believe, I, I don't remember, um, at 7 a.m., I believe, uh, <laughs> the locals in the apartment started firing all of these firecrackers and it was super loud and I woke up and I was like what is going on because that's just what they do <laughs> and I thought that was so funny um so that that was something that came to mind um but yeah Juliana says I live with a local family in Bordeaux I mean yeah right that's also an option for international students you can actually live with a local family so you do actually will also live like a local sure absolutely but I feel like the majority 
of international students, at least like here in Korea. Um, I don't think you can actually live with a host family. I'm not sure. I've never heard about that because um, Koreans are very like, they don't really want other people coming and intruding into their home as much. So I think most international students, at least here, they live in international student dormitories. Um, but definitely, yes, if you, that's a good argument. You can also live like a local with a host family as a student as well. Just not sure if that is that common, but um, yeah. That was just one point I wanted to mention that, yeah, you will live like a lot more like a local, maybe let's say that if you teach abroad versus studying abroad. Because also most inter international students, they will hang out in the university area and it's just not the same. I feel like any university area in any city is not the same as like the real parts of town, I guess, if that makes sense. I don't know. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, right. So let's move on. <laughs> the fourth reason, and this is, this is true though. This is a hundred percent true for teaching abroad. If you teach English abroad, you can stay as long as you want. So what does that mean? With studying abroad, studying abroad has an end, right? You're usually, you're there for six months or maybe a year some also longer, but it has an end, right? With teaching abroad, yes, you have teaching contracts that normally last a year or maybe two years, but you can generally stay as long as you wish, right? It's not like after a year you need to leave, um, but schools are very, very happy to extend teaching contracts once they have a teacher and the, the school likes you, you like the school, if everybody's happy, they are more than happy to extend the contracts because it's very expensive to hire other foreign teachers from abroad. So they rather keep their teachers who are already there. So as long as you want to stay, you will be able to stay, which is not the truth for studying abroad. It has an end. Um, so I don't think anybody can make a comment about that because this is true. <laughs> I think, pretty sure, um, but yeah. And I think this is a very big point and a lot of people maybe don't think about this, right? Um, when they are torn between, should I study abroad? Should I teach abroad? This is a very big reason. Um, and a year, honestly, or six months even, goes by super fast. And if you study abroad, six months is nothing. Um, a year sounds like a lot it's not a lot a year goes by also very very fast and then you just settle in and then it's like okay it's already over i need to go back home with teaching if you don't like it after a year yeah sure leave go home that's fine or go somewhere else but if you really like it you still have the option of staying and exploring it further whereas with studying abroad you can't really do that so that's something really to think about, I think. It's an important point. Okay. And I think now we are heading into the last point that I have for you guys, which is number five. You will make a positive impact on other people's lives when you teach English abroad. <laughs> you might also do that when you study abroad if you're an incredible person. But what I mean is that you as a teacher, you can really impact and change the life of your students. And from my own personal experience, and I'm sure that many of you have already taught abroad or taught anywhere also in your home country, that you'll agree that it's the best feeling in the world when you see your students improve their English. And this is definitely the most rewarding part of the job and something only teaching can give you. I've had many, many instances. Most recently, I had a student who um, I teach English and German. And I had a student who wanted to practice um, German job interview stuff scenarios. Um, and we did that. And then she applied and she had a job interview and she got the, the job. She got the job. She moved to Germany very soon. And that just made me feel so good. And she was like, 
Oh, thank you so much, Linda. This really helped me. I feel like you really prepared me for that. And that's why I got the job. So those are things that just really make you proud. And really, you can make such a big impact in somebody's life with teaching. And you don't get that with studying abroad. You can say what you want. I don't think you can get this same feeling um, with studying abroad than teaching abroad. So, um, yeah, and I think many of you have stories to tell like this where you feel like that's just such a great feeling when you see your students improve um, and they can achieve things that they couldn't before all because of your teaching. And that just feels really great. And Dina says, I love this point. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> the best for last. That's why I put it for number five. Okay, then... <laughs> let me ask you oh let's review first okay before i ask you again <laughs> let's review so when you teach english abroad that's what we covered you actually will make money uh, which you really won't when uh, when studying abroad unless you have like a mini job but usually students international students they can't really work that much so you won't make that much money uh, with teaching abroad you will make money you can make a lot of money. You can also save a lot of money. You can actually pay off student loans, which is great. Number two, you will also get international work experience, which will help you in your future. Obviously, I mean, we can't deny that studying abroad will also really look great on your resume. But with actually working abroad, teaching abroad, you will get more skills, additional skills that you won't get with um, studying abroad. Number three, you will live like a local. So you live actually where the locals live. You will not live in an international student dorm, kind of shielded in your university life. Um, you actually live where the locals live. Um, and here all the firecrackers during Chinese New Year. <laughs> but probably the dorms as well. Anyway, number four, very important point. Some people forget. When teaching English abroad, you will actually, you can stay as long as you want. You're not limited to a semester or a year studying abroad. You can actually stay as long as you want. You don't need to leave. If you like it, you can stay. You don't need to leave. You can explore that further. And number five, you will make a positive impact on other people's lives with your students. Like in my case, where I helped one of my students get a job in Germany. And that's just a really, really great feeling that you cannot you won't get with studying abroad. So now let me ask you again, <laughs> after everything that you've heard now, what do you prefer now? Studying abroad still or teaching abroad? What are your thoughts now? What's what's maybe the, the most impactful point that I talked about? Or maybe do you have another reason why teaching abroad is better? Or maybe another reason why studying abroad is actually better than teaching abroad? Or was there a point where you're like, eh, I don't really quite agree with that. Let me know. <laughs> Let me know. All of you guys who were saying, studying abroad, studying abroad. Did you change your mind? Or you're like, nah, I still think studying abroad is better. And why then? Why? What did not convince you? I was trying my hardest. <laughs> Juliana says both. Okay, great. I agree. Um, in an ideal world, obviously, we all want to do everything and both. But sometimes you just can't, unfortunately. But if you can, do both, of course. Study abroad. Teach abroad. Travel. Backpack. Volunteer abroad. Like, do everything. But sometimes we just can't do everything, unfortunately. We have to pick and choose. <laughs> so, let me know. What do you prefer? <laughs> Thank you, Marcia says teaching abroad. Yay, I did it. I convinced somebody. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right, and Laterx says, thank you for sharing. All good reasons to teach abroad. And number five is the most impactful. Yes, for teaching abroad if given a chance. Nice. I like that. Brett says, teaching abroad, although I wish I could have done both. I know, right? Both, obviously great. Even better if you can do both. 
But if you have to choose, you can only pick one sometimes. Dina says, as an Egyptian woman, I would like to work abroad to get all points that you mentioned. Then I will continue studying abroad. This is also great, right? Didn't even think about that. You can first teach abroad, save money to then continue your studies also abroad. Great. Love that. Good. I wish you all the best and good luck for that. I hope you can do it. Okay. And here we have our Burmese friend. I say again, for my ambition or lovers, I am forced by my strong affirmation, values, and ethics towards my plentiful power for the above things I said. I am an excellent example. Okay, great. <laughs> well, it sounds like you are um, on, a, on a good way. Good. Marcia, I would love to be able to teach both English and Spanish. Yeah, I think they also have like a TEFL TESOL for Spanish, right? Um, maybe, maybe you can explore that. That would be great. That'd be really great. I learned so much since I started also teaching German. It's crazy. Um, I feel like if you, if, if you can speak more than one language, um, like if you're fluent in more than one language than English, besides English, teach it, it's going to make you a better teacher. It's really great. All right. Dina says, thanks a lot for this conversation. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining Dina. I hope to see you again. That'd be great. Okay, and then I want to go into, before we move, before we leave this, um, I want to just get into the different course options real quick. So now we talked about why teaching abroad is um, better. So let's have a look at how you can teach English abroad. How can you go about? Um, this is something I mentioned before. So you want to get at least 100 hours of TEFL or TESOL training as a minimum. And at ITTT, we offer between 50 and 550 hours of training, right? Um, these are all uh, accredited internationally, which is really important and accept accepted worldwide. So if you are not yet TEFL or TESOL certified, then the best option would be this 120 hour TEFL certificate. This is sort of the international standard, right? So this is what you will need to teach English abroad. And today's offer, like I said, we do have 30% off. So this will actually be a lot cheaper than 249. <laughs> like I always say, I can't really do math that well. Um, so you can figure that out, but it's, it's a big discount, 30%. And this certificate um, is 100% online. It has 20 units. You can study at your own pace up to six months, and you will receive an embossed hard copy certificate delivered straight to your door after you graduate. So this will be really, really great for um, teaching English abroad. And then we also have the specialization courses. This is great for the number five point we talked about, if you wanna really make an impact um, in your students' lives. So there are many different specialized teaching fields like business English, young learners, or teaching online. All of these three, um, you can take specialized TEFL courses to add to your portfolio. And um, they start at 175. Just wanna mention that. And again, you can use the 30% off coupon for these as well. If you have any questions about the courses, about anything, feel free to reach out. And I also want to share this email address if you have any questions. Uh, if you have any questions here, you can email us at any time at courses at tesol-tefl.com. All right, and we have Marcia says, yeah, I'm on it. I'm exploring the possibilities to study ELE when I finish the 120 hour course. Cool, yeah, so that's the Spanish TEFL basically. Mm, that's cool. All right, Dina says, I have your TESOL certificate. That's awesome. I'm wondering about CELTA 
Is it right, Salta? Yes, Salta is also a really good teaching English certificate to have. And um, I believe my colleague Lisa, she just did a live session about the difference between TESOL, TEFL, and CELTA. So I highly recommend you check that out um, to figure out the difference. It is in our playlist. We always keep all of our live sessions in our playlists on YouTube and also on Facebook at the same time. So you can um, check that out. And then how you can find IATTT online, like I mentioned in the beginning, teflcourse.net. And we're also on social media. You're already here. If you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do so now. You're already here. You have nothing to lose. <laughs> and this is our discount again. If you can scan the QR code, you can get 30% off. If you can't scan that, no problem. Let me share the link one more time for you all so you can apply and get the discount via this link. Here, you click on this link and um, you fill out the application form, you choose the course they wanna take and you get 30% off the course. And then we can jump into Q&A. So if you still have any questions today, I'm still going to be online for a couple more minutes to answer any possible open questions. Um, if you're not sure about something, let me know. I can answer them. Something that I talked about today or anything else related to TEFL, TESOL, teaching abroad, teaching in Korea, perhaps. I'm here to um, answer them today. <laughs> So whatever is on your mind, let me know. I'll be able to answer it, hopefully. Um, I don't know everything, I'm gonna say that, um, but um, I try. <laughs> and you can also always email us. We have a really, really great team here at ITTT. All of our team members, our um, consultants have taught English abroad. Um, in different countries. So we'll be able to give you a lot of info about that. Some have also studied abroad, studied TESOL, TEFL. So um, you never know. Let us know. Marcia says, yeah, Lisa talked about CELTA last year. I'm not sure the month, but maybe it was in June. Oh, last year. I thought it was more recently. Maybe she talked about it twice, I'm not sure. But it will be in the playlist for sure. If you look for CELTA, it will show up. I think she also covered DELTA. There's DELTA too. CELTA, DELTA, all of those things. Um, she's an expert on that. So I'm going to leave that up to her, sort of. <laughs> but yeah, great. That's why our playlists and our, our live um, session playlists are so great. Because we covered really pretty much every topic teaching related under the sun. Uh, we cover a lot. We've been doing this live sessions for a year and four months every week, pretty much twice. So we cover a lot of topics. So if uh, you can just, I always recommend if you have, if you have a little bit of time during the day, browse this section and you will find something that interests you and maybe you have a question, but still, Feel free to always reach out to us, courses at tesol-tefl.com, no problem. Or also, you can message me on Instagram at lindagoeseast if there's a question you have you want to ask me personally. That's also fine. Yeah, then um, I'm just going to wait a couple more minutes. If there are no questions then anymore, I'm just going to sign off. But I hope maybe you learned something interesting and fun today. Um, I know sometimes some... Topics are more interesting than others, but I try to switch it up and offer something new and different every week, which is not always so easy. <laughs> so it, also, if you have any topic suggestions for something that I should talk about in the future during these live sessions, let me know. I'm open to that. Okay, she interviewed another teacher who had studied both ITTT, Teflon, and then SALTA. Great. Yes, I do remember that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was last year. You're right. But that was good because then this person has both. So they really know um, what's up, basically. <laughs> Great. Okay. 
Let me take a sip of my drink here. <laughs> Brett is doing his CV as he watches this. Great. Cool. Awesome. Teffel CV. I wish you good luck for your job search. I'm sure you'll find something. Great. So did you decide on where you want to go? Italy, Korea, or where? Or not. You just apply. Apply apply to anything. Everything. Everything that interests you, just apply. And you'll see. It'll be destiny, whatever job offer you get. <laughs> the Turk says, thank you, Linda. Happy weekend. Yeah, happy weekend to everybody. Um, I guess we are at the end of this live session now. Um, as always, I will be back again next week. If you have any questions or in the meantime, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. We always respond to them even after the live as well. Um, <laughs> cool. Brett says Italy and then Korea. Cool. Yeah, do that. Totally different. Two totally different places. Awesome. I love it. All righty. Then I'm going to sign off for today. Juliana also says, thank you so much. I learned a lot today, but I still have a hard time picking, picking a place to teach English. Have a nice day. Yeah, I mean, I did a lot of live sessions about different places, countries, continents. Um, but in the end, it's, I mean, it's a hard decision. Um, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. And I mean, you can just teach anywhere and stay for a year and then move to another country, teach there for a year. That's the beauty of teaching English abroad. You can literally do anything you want, which is really great. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for everything again, Linda. Good topic. Have a great week. Thank you, Marcia. Have a great weekend as well. Brett, thank you. You'll be back next week. That's great. And he says, happy birthday again. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it was my birthday on Sunday. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> all right, good. I'm going to sign off and I hope you all have a great weekend. Thank you so much for spending some time of your day with me today. Um, I hope to all see you again next week and, um, stay safe out there. And, um, yeah, <laughs> that would be it for today. Thank you, guys. I'm going to sign off now. Bye-bye. Until next week. Bye, guys. Thank you.